Welcome back to Slow Living. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make professional looking bunting, uh, which is really popular for decorating um, at parties and things like that, but can also be a really beautiful permanent way of decorating a room, for example, a nursery or any kind of outdoor space. I'm going to show you how to make it really well so that you don't have bits of you know fraying thread or anything like that. This is bunting that is designed to last and therefore it's going to take you a little bit longer than the average you know cut and paste job but as you can see the results will be well worth it. You can use any type of fabric that you have left over really. The best types will be uh, woven though so non-stretchy fabrics will sit a lot better and will be easier to handle throughout the sewing process but it's not essential. You will also need some sort of string or cotton tape. I ended up using this um, sort of jersey string that I had left over from another project. So again, this is a good chance to use up what you might have um, left over in your stash. Otherwise, you can make your own bias binding and you can also buy cotton tape. These were scraps that I had from another project. So because I wanted to use these up, um, I had to make my bunting size fit within these squares. If you're using new fabric, you can make your bunting size whatever you like. For reference, mine was about 17 centimeters from the point up to the top of the triangle. And then I added seam allowance to that. You can also make your bunting different uh, shapes if you like. You can do half circles or even squares. It's really up to you and it should be a similar process. Once you have decided on your shape and your size, you just need a bit of scrap paper so that you can make a little pattern, like a template. Because my shape was a triangle, I wanted it to be symmetrical. So to make anything symmetrical, just fold it in half and then make sure that both sides are exactly the same. And then add at least one centimeter of seam allowance all around the outside. Once you have your template, it's a matter of cutting out all of the pieces required to make your bunting. At this point, it's a good idea to estimate how many pieces you will need. So for example, if I wanted my bunting to be two meters in total length, I would take two meters or 200 centimeters and divide that by the length of the top of my triangle, which was approximately 15 centimeters. So in my case, I would do 200 divided by 15 to get approximately 13 triangles. I would probably round that up to 14 or even 15 just to be on the safe side. And then I'm actually going to double that because the bunting that we're making is essentially two layered. That's how we're going to get a really nice crisp line around the outside and no fraying. So each of my triangles is actually made up of two pieces of fabric. If you're cutting your pieces out of quite a large piece of fabric, then what I found easiest is to actually cut it into strips first. So as you can see here, each strip is about the height of my triangles. And from there, I can actually create quite a few layers of fabric if I like, and then cut out the triangles from there. And also because the shape of my bunting was in triangles, I can actually utilize all of the fabric and not have any wastage by cutting um, triangles upside down and then the right way up. Depending on how many pieces you'll need, you might find that the cutting process can be quite long. So make sure that you space it out so that you don't give yourself an RSI. Once you have all your pieces, we're ready to start sewing. Each piece, like I said before, is going to be double layered. So take two pieces with their right sides together and then sew down the two sides. The reason why we're doing that is to stop all that fraying from happening. If we don't line our pieces, over time, the pieces of bunting are just going to fray and they're not gonna look great. So just use a straight stitch sewing machine and sew down one side. And then here's a little hack to get a really nice crisp corner is to fold over at the seam that you just sewed before you sew down the next side. That will make it easier for you to clip into the corner later on so that you can get a really nice pointed corner when we turn these the right way out. Depending on how many pieces you have to do, you might find it easiest to get a little production line going like I did. So just doing one side first, all in one batch and then flipping to the next side. Once you've sewn all your bunting pieces, we can now turn them the right side out. Hopefully you did this so that the uh, printed or the nice side of your fabric is now on the outside and all the seams and all the fraying are enclosed on the inside. Make sure to give each piece a really nice press so that your corners and the sides look nice and crisp. 
After handling the fabric a bit, you can already see that that top edge, which we haven't sewn yet, is already starting to fray like crazy. Depending on the type of fabric that you use, this may or may not happen. So what I'm going to do is overlock across the top of each of these pieces of bunting. It doesn't matter um, in what order you do this yet, because we're going to cut them all into separate pieces anyway. If you don't have an overlocker, you can use your zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, and that should help to prevent all of this fraying from coming undone. Now I'm just going to trim all of these little pieces apart so that they're all separate pieces once again. At this point, you can decide if you'd like to do your colors in a pattern, so a very specific, you know, one of each color and then repeating that, or if you would like to do it randomly. I had a different amount of triangles for each color, so I decided to do mine randomly, and I think that that turned out really well. You don't actually have to put every single one in order unless you are doing a pattern. I found it easiest just to bring all of my pieces to the sewing machine and then randomly select colors as I was sewing. As I mentioned earlier, this is the craft tea sort of yarn that I used because I had it left over and wanted to start using it up. Um, it wasn't optimal for this project because I would prefer something that is not stretchy, so something like a cotton tape or even bias binding. But basically at this point, depending on what you're using, it's time to secure it to the top of your bunting. Make sure you don't forget to leave some extra string at the start and at the end of your bunting pieces. Uh, you don't want to not have anything left to tie up your bunting when it comes time to hanging it up. So make sure that you leave some at the start and also at the end. I think I found it easiest to secure one side first. Um, so if you can imagine bias binding, you fold that over your raw edge and then you get a really nice, beautiful finished edge. And I find that that's easiest to achieve if you sew down one side first and then you fold it over and top stitch that in place. This is what mine looked like when I had only secured it to one side. And at the end of the day, I really wasn't happy with how you could see all those little bits of overlocking and little bits of thread. And it didn't look as clean and secure as I wanted. So then I decided that it would be best to fold it over. And like I said, sew it down again and top stitch it in place. It probably depends on your personal preference, how much time you have, how much you can be bothered, um, but you will get a nicer finish if you do fold it over and top stitch it down a second time. Once you've done that, the last thing to do is give it a final press. Don't skip this step because you really will get a much nicer finish if you give your bunting a really nice press. Everything will be crisp and flat and it will be very satisfying. So don't skip this step. Once you've done that, then your bunting is complete. While the overall process was very simple, it's actually quite labor intensive, but I hope that you find it satisfying to come out with something that can last a really long time. That's not just a use once and throw away thing, but that you can actually loan to friends and family for their use as well. You can find many more tutorials on how to sew stuff that supports a slow lifestyle over on my channel. See you again soon. Bye.